My name is Darius. I'm, I'm currently a president of MUN Society in Warwick University. I want to explain how we work and not only why do we need MUN, by, but how spread the activity is. So there's a dispute how the MUN started regarding what, what geographical point was it, whether it was Harvard or it was Berkeley after the installment of the United Nations. But still, this activity is very old. Is super super old. Students still do it, and in UK alone, we have two, up to two conferences a weekend. That means from 500 to students to over 1,000 students in, let's say, London this February, gather, and they simulate over 30 committees. So that's an exp amazing experience. And there's not only a reason of I want to become a diplomat, I need to go through MUN. No. The, the whole soul of the MUN is to understand how other countries think. So the main reason you forget about your personal belief. If there's a simulation, sorry, if me personally, I understand Western ideas, I think that Germany's policy is great. But during the committee work, I actually represent North Korea, Russia, India, Thailand, Vietnam. I have to understand their point of view. So we must build a civil society that, first of all, understand the dialogue, the point of view of another person, the point of view of another country, and then we can proceed. So I believe this is the, the beautiful UN value that we try to install throughout this communities, throughout the society. And actually, I'm not going to go through the slides because they're basically pictures of UN sessions and stuff like that, and the laptop is there. So I'm just going to explain it all around. Our society has around 300 members right now. So it's quite big, quite successful. It's very fun and interesting. And we have up to 10 people in the executive board. So I'm going to give the floor to Training Officer Brian. Uh, let's start at the basics then. Uh, in, in general, we're just going to keep it very simple today. There are many, many committees in the UN, but we like to focus on three. Uh, one's the General Assembly, the Economic and Social Council and the Security Council. Today we're going to try doing the Security Council. That would be the executive branch of the UN. That's where people actually make decisions. They, they, they basically come to a decision and then they implement it. Every other committee would be like, okay, we, have, we found a problem, we found a solution to this problem, let's send it up to the Security Council. And then the SE itself then decides, okay, let's do this. Uh, so this is where we'll start talking about our procedures in the UN or what we do. First of all, we have a roll call usually, where we'll see you, uh, which countries are here, well, which, how many people are here, and what countries they represent. So uh, I would be like, uh, I'll call out, for example, um, Australia, and then Australia in the crowd would say present, or present of voting, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and then we'll open debate, we'll go straight into debate, where we'll have a general speakers list, where it's basically countries uh, are on the list, they choose to speak, and one by one they speak and talk about the policies, talk about what they want to talk about in the topic, and so on. But that can then be uh, well, sl slightly derailed towards points of motions, which are basically, if they're effectively instruments for you to use points of motions to let you enter uh, conversations, like formal conversations. Points are basically saying, you know, uh, uh, I would like to interrupt this debate for, for, for example, uh, clarity. I want to uh, confirm something myself, or I'd like to go to the bathroom, that kind of thing. Motions, on the other hand, are things you want to affect the entire committee. Motions are like, for example, I would like to enter a caucus, for example. That, that is, I would like to enter this particular uh, session, this mini session in, in the conference itself, where we talk about one specific topic. And, yeah, and then we can go back and forth, back and forth throughout the entire thing. But sooner or later, we will reach there we go. A draft resolution, that is the solution. That is, we'll be writing out a formal solution uh, in, in, in full font, UN terms, all that. And then we'll vote on it. And if it passes majority, if there's more than 50% people in the session that allows, that says, okay, we agree with this, let's pass this, it passes. And everyone claps and then, job well done, and we go home. If not, uh, well, no one claps, uh, everyone's sad, we go, back to the, we go back to the drawing board, basically and see what we can do. So, uh, okay, so let's go through the key terms first before we uh, start. Uh, chair, that is, um, that would be the person sooner or later standing here, that would be me today, me and Darius. And uh, basically the person who's directing uh, the play, guide, guiding the delegates, going, oh, okay, um, 
it's time for you to vote, or okay, it's time to start opening the caucus, that kind of thing. Delegates are, well, basically you guys today, uh, as in re uh, people representing countries. Uh, well, in MUN that is, it would be students representing countries. And decorum, uh, th that just means that when I bang the gavel, that just means, uh, well, uh, everyone please be silent, Every everyone is, is, you know, it's time for more procedures and that kind of thing. So decorum just merely means uh, calm down. Po points of motions, yeah, like I said, they're instruments. We'll get into that in detail later on, but uh, we won't want to scare you too much with that just yet. Okay, right, okay, let's go into the detail for roll call, okay. So, so I think before yeah. we move into roll call, just, um, I'll just tell you the composition of the SC. So the Security Council has uh, 15 nations uh, every single session. Five nations are permanent, Russia, China, United States, UK, UK and France. It was, never it was added later on, but initially it was four, and then the France was the fifth one. So these five are the permanent nations, and then there are ten <coughs> non-permanent nations. At the moment, each non-permanent nation has a term of two years, and then they're voted upon by the General Assembly, as uh, Brian told you about the committees. Uh, so there's always a membership of 15 people in the Security Council, and uh, for the committee to proceed, there needs to be a minimum of nine nations present. So that's why you take a roll call, to make sure we have quorum, is what we call it, two-thirds of the members, and then we move on to proceed, the committee proceedings. What we're going to do now is that we're going to try and simulate a session that we have every week, basically, and uh, we'll be assigning you countries right now. So rem remember your country, uh, think, try to think in the terms of that country, if you can. Um, if not, just try and bring, perhaps, just, just try and imagine what the country would do if, if, uh, if you were in their shoes, basically. Okay. So uh, let's start with the big five then. Uh, who wants Russia, US, United Kingdom, we have France, and China? So you guys will have veto power. That is, later on, when we do come to, for example, a decision, or where we come down to say, we find out that we want to do this so and so, you can actually, one of you five can actually go, yeah, no, I don't want to do this. Let's just cancel the whole thing. So, so, so remember I said about uh, how you need a majority of 50% and all that? Forget all that if one of the five says no, because that's just a no. Uh, that just means, no, thank you, I don't want this. So yeah, uh, try, try and work diplomatically, try and pass this, uh, and just get all five people working together, and that would be the main goal today. Okay, so uh, let's go into some, well, the ones with that veto power then. Uh, Germany, uh, Spain, South Korea. South Korea, Japan, India, uh, Brazil, Canada, Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, Syria. Okay, so whoever doesn't have a country, can you just pair up with someone? So uh, normally we would go for a roll call as in, well, well uh, people would have, for example, a list of, we will have a list of countries, people will have cards that say which country they are. But because, well, I think we all know each other, uh, what countries the US are, we can kind of skip roll call right now. But basically what roll call usually does is that it allows you to choose whether or not you want to abstain, that is to not vote later in, in the main resolutions. Uh, abstain really means that uh, you don't want to vote either for or against. If you like, say, for example, this policy is something that you wouldn't necessarily want in your country, but you're okay with it. So, so do you have to make that decision at that point? Yes. Uh, in, in the roll call, you have to make a decision whether or not in the rest of the conference you want to abstain or not. So, uh, for example, if, it, if it's a very controversial topic, for example, um, let's say the... Let's say um, the Crimean, uh, the Crimean problem, for example, uh, between Russia and yeah, Ukraine. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, Russia would choose not to abstain because Russia would most definitely choose to say something on that issue. So that's just an example. We have a problem right now in the real world. Let's see what we can do to solve it as countries in their point of view. So yeah, today we'll be talking about mostly uh, the Israel-Palestine <coughs> issue and uh, the what well, does human rights issue that there, there are. Uh, or whether or not the war, that there's a war, and whether or not it's legitimate, uh, all, all that basically. If you just go into that topic, and let's see where that takes us. So uh, let's start then. Uh, let's open the speakers list. So in the speakers list, you will have 90 seconds per speaker. I think maybe that should be So just quickly explain uh, the proceedings, right? How a committee session usually works. It has three parts. So it has the general speakers list, that's the first one, that's a formal, formal debate. And then you have the moderated caucuses, which have to be introduced by you guys, the delegates, and uh, then are voted upon. That's a formal, informal debate. So when you move into that, each delegate gets to speak as soon as they're recognized, 
and there can be no questions after that. There's a limited time span on a moderated caucus, and it's a topic under a topic. For example, um, give me give me a topic. Uh, settlement of refugees, for example. Settlement of refugees, okay. Um, so inflow of inf uh, refugees into France would be a, a topic for a moderated caucus. And then there's an unmoderated caucus, which is a fo informal, informal debate so in which we do not get to moderate you guys. You guys can uh, form groups, discuss the problems, make a resolution. That's the point of an informal, informal, or unmoderated caucus. But don't worry, we'll get into that. So soon. we will get into that, and um, so so let's start with on. the general speakers list right now. Okay. Are there any uh, speakers who wish to be added to the general speakers list at this point? Uh, that is Russia, I presume. Mm -hmm. The U.S. France. France. Russia, U.S., and France. Uh, let's go with that right now and see where it takes us. Uh, Russia, you yes. have the floor for 90 seconds. Sign so that. Thank you, Honourable Chair. Uh, the delegate of the Russian Federation is honoured to open this debate on this such, um, such a pressing issue. Um, we would first like to state that we will work with any and all of you who are ready to end the tyranny of imperialism in the region and are ready to work towards the application of human rights to all people equally and not just the uh, Israeli people uh, in, uh, in the Gaza Strip. So, uh, the delegate of the Russian Federation would like to yield the time to points of information. That's all. In order. That is in order. Okay, so uh, you have half a minute left. Okay, so uh, what is going on is that she still has time from 90 seconds left. She's basically taken a minute, around a minute or so to speak. So uh, with that, she has half a minute left. She yields the time, as in she gives the time back, normally back to us. But what she's chosen to do is make that time for questions. So now. You uh, people can ask her questions about her current speech and what she just said and all that. So, are there any points of information on the floor? Uh, we'd like to thank the delegate of Russia for a brilliant speech. However, does the delegate not agree that Hamas is a terrorist organization which needs to be stopped? Thank you, delegate, for your question. Uh, the delegate of the Russian Federation fails to see how the uh, delegate of USA automatically assumes that people in the Gaza Strip whose life are in danger are automatically terrorists. Are there any other points of information on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> that will be a follow-up. Is it delegate? Uh, a follow-up question. Granted. Um, the delegate of the USA did not say all people are following um, are following uh, Hamas government, <coughs> but rather the Hamas government itself is a terrorist organization and not necessarily oh. everyone in the strict. I do not agree. Thank you, Delegate, for your question. Uh, the Delegate of the Russian Federation would like to reiterate the old saying that one man's terrorist organization is another man's freedom fighter. So we would, um, we would like to the, the Delegate of the USA to not automatically make the assumption that Russian Federation is sustaining, approving, or condemning any kind of rebellion against a tyrannic government that was implemented by another country. Any questions? I'm sorry. Oh, All right. Yeah, you guys have any questions about procedure so far and how it's going? Yeah. So, in terms of the speakers list, although you may have um, 15 um, delegates who are part of the speakers list, not everybody, not every state has to speak as part of the speakers list. The they don't have to. It's it's. Um, I mean, you can sit at a conference and not speak throughout the two days. But like, yes, it's your choice. Uh, the, the but thing is, you have to be added to speakers list. That is, you have to actually raise your flag up and be volu and volunteer to speak. Basically, if you don't want to speak, it's perfectly fine. But if you do go on the general speakers list, keep in mind that sometimes procedures does take a long time. People do go into other conferences. We'll see that later. And even if you may be on that list, you may you may not be able to speak for quite a long time. My bad. Delegates written in the Hamas Charter, it, it clearly elaborates on the expulsion and annihilation of the Jewish race continuing from the words of Hitler. And this is a government, this is an organi organization that the UN is looking at or legitimately asking to be the leader of the Gaza Strip. And this is the same organization the delegates of Russia refused to call a terrorist organization, but rather just freedom fighters. If anything, the USA, as a country that promotes liberal values and freedom, has a right to protect the Israeli people from this tyranny. Because we are not just arming an organization, we're protecting a race and people. We're promoting values and democracy in a region where there's very little there. And this is something the USA, along with all their other natural allies, seeks to do in the future. And with that, this delegate opens themselves up to further questions. Point of uh, order, could the chair make a point uh, 
Like, oh, uh, yeah, if you notice, uh, she set point of order, which means basically, well, uh, it, it, if we had accidentally got something wrong, for example, uh, that, that would be a point where you can basically, a point basically where you can basically just go, yeah, I have something to say. So, uh, point of information, as you've seen just now, was questions. So, uh, point of order would be asking if the chair had gone something wrong, that is, the chair forgot something. Uh, point of parliamentary procedure means you want to clear up something. So, you, you're not sure about this procedure, could the chair you know, just clear it up? And finally, point of personal privilege would be, can I use the bathroom, is the aircon too, too, too high, you know, that, that kind of thing, the personal stuff. So yeah, uh, point of order. Point of order. Could the chair specifically state uh, the policy on directly addressing other delegates in a formal debate? That is in order. Right. So uh, as you notice, uh, between the US and Russia, they really start to have this little uh, problem between the two of them. Did they have uh, different views? So US doesn't go to Russia and say, well, Russia, you know, directly and saying, well, you're wrong. They, they, he doesn't do that. Instead, what he does is he addresses the entire room. You cannot talk to delegates like this. What you have to do is make a speech about the topic itself, and then uh, basically write the speech in a way that you kind of address what you want. What, say, for example, Russia wants to say. So, yeah, always, always keep it. Always keep your speech tailored for the general audience, and never speak directly to a delegate. Right? Are there any points of motions on the floor? So that's when. So, for example, it's the chair's discretion to ask when, <coughs> if there are any points of motions on the floor. And this is the time when you can motion for a moderator caucus. Now, a moderator caucus, as I said earlier, is an informal, formal debate. And for example, it could be 15 minutes, each speaker could have a minute to speak, and the delegate will, sorry, the chair will recognize each speaker one after another. Just remember that for this particular caucus, you have to have a specific topic. You must give the time and speaker's time. There's no yielding time, so there's no questions and all that. And yeah, just say something like this. So are there any points of motion on the floor? Delegates of USA. A uh, motion for a four-man moderator caucus on the topic of settlement building in the West Bank. Uh, four minutes. How many speakers? Uh, speaker time, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 that seconds. is in order. Uh, and is, are there any other motions on the floor? Seeing as there are none, we shall now vote upon the delegates of USA's motion. A four minute moderate caucus or speaker's time 30 seconds. Right. So pass, to pass a moderate caucus you need just half majority of the committee. So uh, that would mean two, four, seven, six. Sorry, six, uh, eight, 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 eight. Eight. eight delegates voting for the motion. That would pass the motion and therefore you'd move into a moderate caucus, which is different from a GSL. So you'd move into a moderate caucus to discuss the issue that Delegate of USA proposed. Right, so now that we've gone into voting procedures, those who wish to vote for this motion, please raise your hand. That's... Remember, a one vote for one country, by the way. So, that's... Uh, please keep your hands up high. So, uh, you, you need to vote in these, so basically you can only choose four or against. You cannot abstain in these. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, wait, let's just do that one more time. Just Right. With uh, a vote of 13, uh, 13 for and zero against, this clearly passes. Right, we're now in a four minute, four minute moderator caucus, starting from now. Uh, right, uh, delegate. On the topic of settlement building. <laughs> on the topic of settlement building, yes. So impressed with the Obama administration. And, uh, and how they've handled the conflicts thus far. And we hope that in the future we'll continue on the same vein and settlement building will be done legitimately by the Israeli government and we feel that they do not intend for any illegal activity. Thank you, delegate. Right, are there any other, are there any other speakers willing? Oh, the delegate of uh, Canada. Canada. You have 30 seconds. Uh, the delegate for Canada for the question uh, that settlement should not to Thank you, delegate. Right. Uh, so, in a moderate caucus, your speeches don't necessarily have to last the entire time. So, basically, you can do what he did and say for around 15 seconds or so, and then sit down. You don't have to use time to questions. You don't have to use time back to us. It's just a rolling thing. So, the next speaker, then. Uh, are there any other delegates? Okay, delegates of Russia. It was. Thank you, Honourable Chair, for the floor. The Delegate of Russia, underlying the 
what the delegate of Canada has said, would like to further question the legality on, uh, on an international perspective of these settlements in the West Bank and would strongly encourage all delegates here to, to thoroughly consider the option of uh, working towards a framework which would prevent Israel from uh, colonizing, for lack of a better word, um, a territory that is legally not his own. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Delegate. Right, uh, are there any other speakers willing to take the floor? Delegates of Turkey. Turkey. Uh, Turkey wishes to express uh, agreement with uh, the members of Russia and Canada uh, and express the uh, statement that um, the illegal building of settlements in the West Bank by Israel is an act of Zionist aggression uh, and um, it is a disruptive feature in peace settlements. Thank you. Uh, right, uh, just a moment. If you notice, Turkey uh, uh, and other delegates so far have, that have spoken have all used a particular quirk. I think you've noticed that they didn't use the word I or me. Uh, in, in the conference itself, in the formal conference, you cannot address yourself in the first person. That is, you must always address yourself in the country or say we or say the delegates of. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, there's no, uh, so basically, you cannot use the word I, uh, me, uh, my. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you have to address the delegates formally by saying the delegate of blah blah. It's it's a bit long, but that's the formal way of saying it. Uh, right. Are there any other speakers wishing to take? Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Right. With that, this moderate caucus has now elapsed. In other words, it's ended. We're now back to the general speakers list. Although we don't have to move back into the yeah. There's also. So, we don't need to go for the moderated caucus all the time, for example. Here below, we have a moderated caucus. So, there can be a motion to open and moderate to go for a moderated caucus, which is basically, we have 10 minutes time, 5 minutes time, whatever we agree on, even 15 or 20. And people, because we obviously see that Russia is one side, United States is another side. So, people who support their views, they go in blocks, and there's... Talk. They go to different groups, basically, yeah. and then they, they try to find a solution within their own group. When they're done with that particular group, they go to the other side and be like, uh, let's try and reach a compromise. That's what normally happens. Because this is the main part. This is where the lobbying comes in. This is where approach opposition, talking about, hey, maybe we can figure something out. So and this is where the diplomacy, sorry, what I've said. This is where diplomacy, this is where diplomacy comes in. And where this is where you show your skills as a delegate. Because if a delegate has enough knowledge about their country's policy, he might not agree. If he doesn't know, he might agree on certain stuff where we saw Iran and United States working together, or North Korea and United States working together on very controversial issues. So this is where you show yourself as a delegate, usually. Okay, so uh, are there any points or motions on the floor? Let's... Uh, delegates off. The delegate of the United Kingdom would like to um, raise a point of motion about um, migration around all of the different countries, um, around the West Bank, and would like to talk about um, how we can resolve where all of the migrants are. Right, so mi migration it is. Uh, how many minutes in total would you like to? Uh, three. Three minutes, and how, and how much time per speaker? Um, 45 seconds. <laughs> that is in order. Very well. Uh, are there any other points of motion on the floor? Uh, Seeing as there are none. No, well, I am, I'm as well as a delegate oh. of Canada. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Delegate of Canada would like to raise a motion to open a Mauryan caucus on the same topic, but to have it five minutes. Five minutes general speaker time, uh, 30 seconds. That is in order. Uh, that, that is also in order. Okay, so uh, what happens is that he has raised, basically, he's basically like, I agree with your motion, but I want it to be longer. Yeah, because so, I feel, for example, I feel that like we need to debate it a bit, yeah. a bit more. So, so what happens is that when someone else does it, we will vote upon his suggestion, and if that suggestion passes, your motion basically passes anyway. So, uh, okay, so we shall, uh, are there any other points of motions on the floor? Seeing as there are none, we shall now move into voting procedures on the Delegate of Canada? Canada's? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> on Delegate of Canada's motion. Uh, of a five minute moderate caucus, a 45, 45 second speaker's time. <laughs> Okay, are there, uh, right, those who wish to vote in favour of this motion, please raise your hand.
Of course, of course. Yeah. I did a, basically, during the conference, you always have the person who wants to speak. And there's a reason behind it. Usually it's to hype up the crowd sometimes. Sometimes if, if you speak five, five to sec, ten seconds more, you can annoy the chair, but there's still a reason behind it. So I, as a delegate of Canada, I didn't say anything strong as Russia or United States. I, I talked about the third neutral position, so like a third block, which would be created in this sense. And then I annoyed him as well, because I, want, I think this is more important, and let's forget about these two problems, let's speak about something neutral. Yes, so uh, this is what happens when someone runs out of time to continue speaking. I just yeah. bang it until they stop. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, delegate, please refrain from using personal pronouns. If you also notice, he, work, he use the word I sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, don't use personal pronouns. Right. Uh, any other delegates wishing to speak? Delegates of UK. Thank you. Um, the delegate of the United Kingdom would like to raise the issue that the United Kingdom taken a lot of refugees, and so I don't think that we can resolve this problem until we resolve the issue of the, the um, unsettlement of peace there. Thank you. Thank you, delegates. Any other delegates? The delegates of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the delegate of the United Kingdom would like to say that um, in the migration, the only way that this problem and issue can be sorted is if all countries help out as such um, and agree with each other to sort out the issues we have and how we can help these poor people in these situations live a happy life as some it's not all of these people are not all bad people there are some of these people who actually are fleeing to because they are like can't live where they're living they're not just here to get like benefits so we all need to help because we need to stop wars and conflicts because we want peace around the world and in all the countries. Thank you. That's just about right actually. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you guys wish to sound your appreciation for speech, uh, if you guys actually notice it sometimes, yeah. yeah. Uh, they do this, a drum roll, kind of drum roll. Now the chair doesn't necessarily like it because it kind of disturbs who cares? the chair. Exactly, but who cares? Because basically if you hear a good speech. Yes. Tap on the chair. Yeah. Though uh, sometimes the chair could get a bit nifty and be like decorum, but you, you know. But most of the time we'll let it pass. Okay, so are there any other speakers wishing to take the floor? Delegate of Turkey. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the delegate of Turkey wishes to express that um, there are multiple ways of uh, dealing with the refugee crisis throughout all of Europe and not just in the West Bank, but especially express that one of the main issues and one of the main ways we can solve this issue is by disestablishing the uh, cruel um, blockade on the West Bank by the Israeli government. Oh, no, no, you have 15 seconds left. Oh, okay. Very well, that's in order. Uh, are there any other speakers? Delegate of... Uh, Germany. Germany. Germany commends Turkey on his last speech. And uh, we believe that the UK and other countries have made, made very uh, liberal and idealistic uh, speeches about peace and everyone working together. But let's not forget that the initial problem is Israel uh, building settlements in the West Bank destroying social tissue, accaparing uh, uh, resources, and then portraying the honest people of the West Bank as terrorists, as leeches of the society that they are actually uh, seeking to destroy. Thank you, delegates. Uh, delegates of the United States, was it? Yeah, okay. uh, we'd like to thank the delegate for his last speech. However, we'd just like to make a few corrections. Firstly, the Israeli government is in current talks with the delegate of, uh, with the ambassadors from the West Bank, the Fatah organization. Uh, we do not believe that, Israel does not believe that these people are leeches and uh, subhuman. No, the delegate, Israel believes that all equal citizens are equal and everyone is equal under the law. And we do feel, therefore, it is uh, unfair that they've been caricatured in this way. And the correction is that there is dialogue. The settlements are for the good for everyone who is living in occupied in Israel at the moment, and there's only a pattern. Thank, Thank you, delegate. Thank you, delegate. With that, uh, sorry, with that, the Caucus is now relaxed. <coughs>
So, uh, okay, now we're back to John's speakers list, and uh, the chair would now highly smile upon a 10 minute unmoderated caucus. But, oh, by the way, when the chair says highly smile upon, it merely means the chair wishes for something, or the chair would like something to happen. It doesn't necessarily have to happen, but when the chair says something like that, it's more or less... Usually happens. Yeah, usually happens. Right, delegates of Russia. Surprisingly, the delegate of Russia would like to raise a motion for a moderated caucus of 10 minutes to discuss uh, Working paper. Oh, perfect. You read my mind. He has written out some some solutions that he feels like are right. Now, normally uh, in an actual session, you, you would need to do it with many other countries, like basically have around say 10, 15 people coming together and writing or typing out something, uh, a list of solutions. But right now, for the purposes of today, we'll accept his basically his list of solutions. We'll talk about his list and see whether or not we agree with them. And if the majority agrees, it passes. If not, it doesn't pass, basically. And we'll just call this a draft resolution for the sake of today. Right, uh, so a uh, motion to introduce a draft resolution. Count of eight to five, this motion passes. Very well, uh, so basically um, the chair can offer the delegates an amount of time for him to talk about his points. <coughs> so a draft resolution is basically, um, it's a document that states how we're going to solve a problem. It requires like formal language and you need to abide by um, Foreign, well, foreign policies, firstly, and secondly, international law. So uh, th that's the reason it's introduced. So, for example, so USA gave it to the chair. We checked it, if it's all right according to international law and by the format, and then it's introduced. And that's the reason for the introduction of a draft so resolution. So basically, anyone can send something up to the chair and, and be, okay, this is my draft resolution, but we have to look at it and go, Okay, it's, it's this, yeah, it's this yeah, according to form. Okay, your draft, resolution, your draft resolution has been accepted, and then they can raise a motion to introduce it. So, um, so this uh, draft resolution was submitted in uh, collaboration with South Korea and Japan. And so the first clause is calls for peace uh, talks between Israel, Gaza Strip, and the West Bank. The second clause is calls for a reformation, uh, reaffirmation of rights of migrants in the surrounding Arab countries that have come from Israel. And uh, the last one is the calls for the reformation of the ceasefire between uh, Israel, Gaza Strip, and West Bank. Okay, thank you, delegates. Okay, uh, we're now in uh, voting procedures. Right, normally in a uh, moderate Normally in a normal conference, like in the big conference, they bar the doors. Like they actually lock the doors to make sure no one gets out during the voting procedures. Yes, it's an actual thing. But uh, yeah, let's just assume everyone's here for now. Okay, so uh, right, we shall now move into the voting procedures for draft resolution 1.1. Uh, calls for peace talks between Israel, Gaza Strip and West Bank. Calls for a reaffirmation of the rights of immigrants, of migrants, sorry, of, uh, from the surrounding Arab countries. And calls for the reaffirmation of ceasefires between the countries. Those who wish to vote in favour of this resolution, please raise your hand. Those against? Veto, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Those abstaining? <laughs> sorry, not Veto. sorry. Um, so, for a resolution to pass in the Security Council, it needs the vote of the five permanent nations, that's China, USA, U Russia, France, and... So, so if you notice, uh, yeah. we, we actually had a majority. I think it was uh, nine people. I think nine. Was, no, nine, so, nine people yeah, voted for. So, yeah. You need a two-thirds majority, though. Yeah, so, so we actually had a majority, but uh, 
Russia chose to veto because it was not in Russia's interest to pass this resolution. So basically, uh, in the conference, your goal is to get everyone on board in, in, the, five, in the big five countries. And to try to accommodate for everyone, or else Russia would do just that. And sometimes after three days, it happened, after three days of intense debating, after like, I don't know, one, one day is like around 10 hours of debates. One guy just stands up and be like... And, and vetoes it at the very last moment. Flips the table. And everything is just for waste. This sometimes happens as well. And this is probably the, 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 the most realistic side of the United <laughs> yeah, Nations. The most realistic thing. Yes. Well, so are we done on the simulation? We are basically done. Uh, oh, five, uh, five last but not least, since uh, this, this resolution has not passed, uh, no, uh, clapping is not in order then. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, are there any, uh, uh, does the chair will now highly smile upon closing the debate. Are there any points or motions on the floor? Delegate to USA. A motion to close the debate. That is in order. Uh, those who, uh, who wish to vote in favour of closing the debate, please raise your hand. Those against? Thank you. Quick shout out to the delegation of the oh, UK. Yeah.